Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and things are getting pretty crazy today. Here's for example, one thing that's happening today that everybody in the crypto space is watching for or scared of or something along those lines. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Obviously, this is the most important event of today for traditional markets and thus also for crypto. But I guess shortly we'll hear as to what happened with it. Uh, as I stated before and actually over in Telegram, honestly guys, if you've not joined my alert Telegram just quite yet, check out the link down below. Go look down below at DustyBC Alerts or something like that. Join it. I have a couple of very important updates in there that I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check out. Also, if you're enjoying these daily videos, make sure you press that like button. And to kind of go on, this visit is rather important for reasons I don't want to go too deep into over on YouTube. Let's just say that it's a highly controversial meeting. The markets can move pretty significantly because of anything surrounding it, and we'll have to see. But if we go into what I actually wanted to talk about, this article puts the two things together, though. Um, regarding Ripple slash XRP, as you guys know by now, Ripple is in a lawsuit with the SEC, and everything that's happening in that case is mostly determining where the price goes. In other words, depending on what happens in the case, it'll most likely affect the XRP price. In a sense that if there's some crazy update that's really bullish for Ripple, in the case, well, most likely the price could do good, or at least there's a higher likelihood of winning. So people are pricing it in piece by piece, for example, over the next couple of weeks, for example, because we've seen before that even though Ripple has a great victory, the price didn't shoot up. And even though the SEC had some sort of small victory in the lawsuit, the price did not drop. But I think we'd all conclude that if Ripple eventually wins the case, that's most likely going to be some crazy pump for uh, XRP. I honestly expect it to be crazy. Right now, if you're wondering what we're waiting for, we're waiting for the William Hindman documents and what the judge is going to say about that. Uh, actually, it says here, while geopolitics are in the spotlight, SEC v. Ripple case remains the key driver. Investors await a court ruling on the SEC objection via v. the William Hinman speech-related documents. Well, to be honest with you, uh, this whole situation of the William Hinman documents is honestly pretty crazy. It's been like so ridiculously long just to see what the uh, the people at the SEC were thinking of a speech. It's like, man, give it up already. The reason that they're doing it so meticulously, you know, trying to defend it in any way, shape or form, leads me to believe that they have some critical stuff in there. And I honestly think Ripple's going to get it pretty soon, though. Because the judge basically already said, yeah, give it over. And the SEC is cost of what it costs trying to protect these documents, which is kind of sketch. There's actually something else that's interesting. John Deaton fumes at Twitter poll that excluded Ripple from the list of top cross-border payment options. <laughs> so, as you guys probably know, Cointelegraph is kind of garbage when it comes to, um, I guess, properly categorizing crypto or proper questionnaires, I guess. Cointelegraph said over on Twitter, What's your preference for cross-border payments? Bitcoin, stablecoins, traditional banking, and other. Now, in my own opinion, this is fine because they just asked what's your favorite and it's not Bitcoin, not stablecoin, not traditional banking, it's other. And that's obviously the section that got the most votes. So I'm not really sure exactly why John Dean could be angry with it. It's just kind of stupid because obviously XRP is meant to be this cross-border payment token. So it's kind of strange that they did not include it in the list. However, at the end of the day, they did say other. It's not as if they only gave four concrete options. But yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy, I guess. It, it's, it's just in the sense that Cointelegraph has always been kind of against Ripple, or at least not for XRP or the community or anything like that. It's just kind of like, oh, again, huh? Again. Also, interesting. 172 million XRP got transferred between exchanges and unknown wallets as Ripple locks 700 million XRP back into escrow. So yeah, some money is being moved. It could be Ripple. It could not be Ripple. I don't really care. It doesn't matter too much. People try to really put this into your head saying, no, check out these movements for this or that reason. But as I described to you guys before, it really is not going to change too much, guys. Um, regardless of how much is moving, as long as Ripple's doing that for the XRP ecosystem, you know, they're the 300 million that they kept, for example, now. Oh, it's laggy a little bit, the camera. I guess it's because it's crazy hot. Not sure if I said it at the start, but what the frick is going on with Europe right now? I mean, I left Dubai right now for, for summertime a little bit because I thought, ah, Europe would be better. This is awful. Because in Europe, not every home is built with AC, you know? And fun fact, I'm going back to the Middle East uh, 
very shortly here. It's going to be interesting. You guys will see it over on my Instagram. But I digress. Whenever Ripple moves money, for example, it's usually to better the XRP ledger ecosystem or I guess uh, something along those lines to help out an ODL customer or as we've seen before in the Q2 report. It could also not be Ripple, but at the end of the day, movements like this, will movements, uh, if you asked me a year ago, I would have said, no, follow that, check it out. Right now, I'm like, well, we've seen a dozen thousand of these and I can't really derive anything from it. I can't say like, oh no, whenever this happens, that means that this. Anyway, let's continue on actually. Twitch streamers can now create NFTs and generate tokens on the XRP ledger. So apparently there's one company, I guess, that went to make this a little bit easier for Twitch streamers to do. I don't think this is something I'm personally very interested in, nor is it something that I think is very useful. Um, oh, very laggy yet again. But I guess it's, uh, it's something, you know, for XP Ledger. Yeah, it's something. It's something, I guess. You already saw it at the bottom just now, but Ripple awards Dex application developers. Okay, I'm turning that camera off. I'm done with it. Ripple awards Dex application developers $100,000 in uh, XRP Ledger grants, which is crazy. The new third wave is uh, is coming along and basically these guys are getting a lot of freaking money to develop on the XRP Ledger ecosystem. As I stated before, right, uh, Ripple is spending a lot of money on, on making this a big success. Obviously, every single crypto out there does it. Um, HBO, for example, I think set up a $5 billion fund. But let's just say it like this. Expansion is here. If you're not part of the XP Ledger ecosystem, <laughs> get left behind. No, but in all seriousness, there's a lot more happening than people are noticing or people are exposed to if you're just, you know, watching XRP on a, on a flat basis. There's a lot happening in the background. Here we have one another, uh, one of the other ones. Hundreds of millions of XRP transactions pop again as Ripple address raises stakes. Nothing too special, nothing too crazy, nothing too important. Here's again another one of the same. Ripple moves 100 million XRP. In total, 224 million XRP was moved around exchanges and unknown wallets in the last 24 hours. Means not so much. Again, normally, this is like, okay, going from exchange to unknown wallet. That means they're actually taking money off of the exchange, meaning there's lower selling pressure now. But it's vice versa because here you can see, okay, unknown exchange to unknown wallet to Bitstamp means this is... um. Theoretically speaking, a deposit, which should be derived as something bad, but you don't really know exactly what they do when they deposit it or withdraw it. And it could just be uh, that it's a, a movement from Bitstamp themselves, for example, because these are such huge amounts. It's hard to say anything about it. And also right now, there's a very strange situation. I already described this to you guys yesterday, partially with the fact that the SEC is now really starting to lose their mind. Uh, but the US senators seek to grant the CFTC control over crypto regulation, which I would say is the right way to go about it. Rager said, this would be bullish for crypto, especially with Ether being included as commodity. Um, a new bill that would give the CFTC oversight over Bitcoin and Ether has been unveiled. The bill would deem Bitcoin and Ether as commodities. And well, even though it's not, you know, inclusive of Ripple, for example's XRP just quite yet, it's a start from somewhere. OK, you know, we also had a couple of other nice bills, right? Like the, the $50 or below crypto transactions would be tax free, which to me is very confusing. Does that mean if you keep, you know, doing a $10,050 transaction, that means you're you know cashing out tax free then? Is that is that how it works? Because that means like it's the easiest way to get out of capital gains tax, right? If anything below fifty dollars does not constitute as that, because what if you make a hundred thousand transactions of fifty dollars? What then? Or if you buy fifty dollars worth of cash vouchers, for example, how does that work? And again, the confusion is earning less than fifty dollars. Does that mean on you know what exactly? In late July, Pennsylvania Senator Patrick Toomey in Arizona, blah blah blah, proposed a bill that will prevent Americans from reporting crypto transactions earning less than fifty dollars. So. If you deposit a dollar, makes 50 bucks, you know, theoretically speaking, right? Every single time, 49, you're always fine. You don't have to report that because that's kind of strange, no? But yeah, regarding that the CFTC was going to take over, I wanted to kind of couple it back to this one. Coinbase X manager pleads not guilty to insider trading charges. If you guys remember, right, the SEC went after Coinbase and the X manager here who has been, um, you know, basically charged for insider trading. I think it's rather interesting to see that in their trial for insider trading, it was said like, oh, but you also traded all these unregistered securities and whatnot and that because of the way in which they did it the companies that are being quote-unquote charged or i guess alleg allegated or whatever they can't really defend themselves properly because this individual has to defend for them he has to say like oh no those weren't securities the companies themselves are just like standing on the sideline thinking you know what 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 happened i'm not sure how that would work in terms of suing the sec for misstating something about your crypto or a counter lawsuit or something like that i honestly don't know exactly how that would work what I do know, though, and what I do realize is that if you start to think about it, crypto is in such an infancy state 
just the fact that all these new things have to be, I guess, taken care of still. You know, we're at the start of the start of the start with all of this. There's not even a clear rule as to who exactly rules over it. It leads me to believe that the SEC is just trying their luck to get control. But other parts of the US and other senators, luckily, are also like, Nah, it's not under the SEC's control, because why would it be? You know, the CFTC has logical authority over it. You can't say, no, the SEC should have control over crypto because some are securities, for example. No, that would mean that the CFTC has normal control and some specific things don't fall under the CFTC, but under the SEC, because those might constitute as securities. It's not, not everything should fall under the SEC's uh, bracket. But I guess because crypto is not necessarily a commodity in some people's opinion, not really a currency in some people's opinion, not really a security in some people's opinion, but it kind of is all of them to some people, that is. It's like, well, whatever agency wants to grab it, go grab it, because none of them are trying their hardest, uh, except for the SEC, that is. And maybe, maybe, maybe. It's just because why not have more when you know you can win a lot of enforcement actions that way, right? Through Gary Gensler, for example, he probably knows he can make a couple billion dollars for the, for the team, you know, put a nice little little star behind his uh, name in, in the in the report, you know, in his report when the, the teacher comes to look. Oh, Gary, you get another star for good, uh, good, good lawsuits, you know, and thanks for getting another $5 billion out of those crypto guys. Yeah, if you think about it, that, that might be what exactly they went for, so to speak. And it's kind of crumbling apart piece by piece as nobody's trying to take their BS. Uh, and I guess some senators in the U.S. are trying to figure that out too. Again, guys, even SEC members are noticing a lot of this stuff is just garbage, what the SEC is doing. I'm still not sure exactly why they're doing it. I think it's one big house of cards that's going to crumble eventually as investigations roll on further. But for the time being, let's just um, observe it and say, wow, that's kind of weird. <laughs> Within a couple of months, though, guys, I think, ah, no, let's say a year. Within a year, I think a lot of this stuff will be fixed. Right now, crypto reg regulations are being set into place. And I think within a year from now or so, we'll be so far, as most likely the Ripple lawsuit will be over. A lot of these cases which we're seeing right now will be fixed. And the definition, it probably can't wait another entire year, right? As the moment that Ripple settles, yeah, we've got ourselves most likely a key example of a crypto not being considered a security. And I think a lot of cryptos will come after that quite quickly. Or the SEC, if they win or something like that, will go for a lot of lawsuits. And of course, guys, they'll try to object and say, no, we need to do a redo because we think we are right. But again, we shall see. That was it for today's video, though, guys. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. Sorry for the camera. It is like freaking 70,000 degrees in this room. Not so sure exactly how that came to be. Europe is a pretty crazy place right now, especially today. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you press the like button, as I just said. Make sure you join my Telegram, and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.